wrestled, you know, back then, what, seven times a week, twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday, right? And I wrestled him every night for years. When, you, when you're working with a guy that much, and, and certainly I've wrestled with a bunch yeah. of guys a bunch of times, yeah. but nothing like you. you yeah. your, your career was much longer than me. In, the, in those uh, the days that, that you were in the NWA, the way you guys traveled, what's it like when you, you've got, you know, 1,500 total matches with a guy and say you're at number 1,200. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. do you even say anything to, anything, no, to, to each other before you just, go out there? Just, just magic. Just go. Yeah. And he, he goes, when he, he came back, he came back from New York and, <laughs> oh, I know you know, he, that's what I'm going to tell you, right? And uh, uh, he, he said, did you see me wrestle Savage? I said, yeah. I said, how many pages of literature do you have to memorize? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll tell you the story, too. Yeah. Yeah, you wrestled Randy, you wanted to write a book. I knew exactly yeah. where, where you're going yeah. with this because yeah. I heard the story. No, I never, I mean, I got to walk out the door. I, I can tell where I'm at with my opponent when I walk out the door. Right. When I hear the crowd, now I know what direction I'm going. I mean, that's just, it's a gift. Right. But I never, you can't plan things out. My God, you know how that goes, right? You can walk out one day and have all this laid out and the crowd's going, they're booing the crap out of it. You got to feel it, hear it, and then go from there. Right. But in, in, in that vein, and, and talking about TV uh, briefly, these days, you know, uh, and, and we're not saying anything to the business is the way it is now. It has changed drastically from when you were in and, and I was in. But these days, you know, you can go out and almost carte blanche and you know, have as much time as you wanted on that card. These days, you know, they'll nail down those specific schedules and say 15, 18, 18. And if you're working on TV, you've got to take those scheduled breaks. Yeah. So you got to work those breaks into your match. Mm-hmm. And it, it becomes, uh, you know, a menu of things to do and things to go out on. Mm-hmm. And it really takes away the freedom or the flow of the match when you're trying to time out commercial breaks you know, instead of just working a match. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's just it. In, in, in all fairness to the kids today, right, um, you know, you can get to the building and they'll say you have 10 minutes. Because it's live TV, you they'll, you'll get to the gorilla and they'll say you got three minutes, you know. Right. And, and whatever they planned, you, you know, you got to be able to ad lib because you can't put a ten minute match together in three minutes that you've been practicing all day long. I mean, right. it's just but it's live TV. It's just a different life. Right. Yeah, I'm not, my hat's off to them because you know it, you know you, the interview can run long and then you know somebody's talking too long and you get there and you lose a minute here, a minute here, a minute there. Pretty soon you got a ten minute match worked out. And, you get up the grill and they say you got two minutes. <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> my, my my hat's off to them. It's hard. And, and, and there's nothing worse than going to the grill and say, okay, well, you, you guys had twelve, you got seven. Yeah, you've been through it. You I'm know, sure. Hey, man, that yeah. sucks. But um, you all, you always won. Me, I just had to figure out a way to lose faster. <laughs> well, you, you know what? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you know when they they tell you you know you got twelve minutes and all of a sudden you get to grill and they say you've got seven. And, you know, you've got 10 pounds of shit you're trying to put in a five-pound bag. Nobody gets over because it's just a rolling cluster inside yeah. the ring. And you've got to be able to tell a story. But anyway, I'm sitting here on my ass in a hotel room with the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Got Mo Darwich here in stealth mode, running the controls, making sure we document history. Here, the greatest of all time. I'm talking to Ric Flair, coming back from our sponsors. All right, gang, I'm about to tell you something you already know. Mailing and shipping are an important part of running your small business, but it can get in the way of actually growing your business if you're always making trips to the post office. That's a complete waste of time. So all you got to do is use stamps.com instead. You know, with stamps.com, everything you do at the post office, you can do right from your desk. You buy and print U.S. postage for any letter or package using your own computer and printer, and stamps.com will send you a digital scale that calculates the exact postage you need for any class of mail. Hell, you'll never have to go to the post office again or even lease one of those expensive postage meters. Are you down with that, Mo? Oh, I can do it. Oh, I guess you probably like to spend your time at the post office. No, I do not. Then are you doing the stamps.com thing? I've been on it since you uh, heckled me about it last show. You print your own stamps? Oh, that's what I'm doing, man. It's own. easy, ain't it? And I got my weighing scale, too. It was all free. Why not? Yeah, but check it out. Right now, if you use my name, Steve, for the special offer, not only is this a no-risk trial, but you get a $110 bonus offer. That includes that digital scale and up to $55 free postage. Don't wait, Mo. I know you already said you're doing it, but if you're lying to me, don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Well, you got to push the record buttons. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Steve. That's stamps.com. Enter Steve. Welcome to the Steve Austin Show. All 
Hi, Steve Austin coming back from the break. Once again, thanks to our sponsors, keep the show on air for free. Uh, I damn sure can't pay for it. I'm sitting here talking to the nature boy over the hotel room. I got some candles burning, the atmosphere's going, the nature boy got some stone in his mouth. There's a beer on the table, I'm drinking water, I might crack one over here in a minute. Yeah, I was but gonna anyway. say, that, that's embarrassing in itself. I know, but you're, you're, with you're, me. The, only, you're the only wrestler alive that got paid to drink after the match. You, here's the thing, when you're a hack like me, talking to the greatest of all time, you gotta maintain your sanity and professionalism, and I also drove up here. I ain't got a limo driver like you. Where we left off, we were talking about Ricky Steamboat, and uh, I was there for some reason. I saw so many of them on YouTube. Can I interrupt this for a minute? You can, one, one, can I interrupt this for a minute? Yeah. One of the best matches I ever saw in my life. We were in Sioux City, Iowa. And me and Holden were the main event. Him and Steve Holden were ahead of us. Him and Steve Holden were before that joint down. And we were after. Do you remember that? Yeah, you did. You used to go out and stole the show. It went about 10 minutes too long. Remember Eric, Eric was screaming? No, I can't remember. Yeah, but you and Steve would stole it, man. The best match I ever had with Steve. Uh, no, thank you. It was a good match. I remember one time. That we was were great. Right horn. Remember the old Los Angeles Wall? Yeah. Man, it was a great building. Yeah. And uh, so, way back in the day, we were going to the WWE mm -hmm. Broadway. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I had to No, that's WWE or? No, this was, this was WCW. WCW, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, man, that old building. Was, Nobody saw, but then there may be six, seven thousand people in the building. Flies. But out of all the matches, we're talking about you. Uh, what was what would be the, the, the classic defining game of square match? Chicago. Chicago, you dropped the title. Chicago, you dropped that three match series. Remember? Yeah. Chicago, and then we wrestled in Chicago, we dropped the title, and then we went on all of New Orleans. I walk out to the ring, clash of champions, right? And Steve Holden went out, right? And they got R-I-C-K flair. I think you spelled my name right. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think no. it's Steve Holden. I think it's spelled my name right there. What the hell? What are you thinking that when you were Yeah, I, know. I was laughing like that. I know, but it makes you mad, it though. You laugh. laugh. Like, uh, it made me laugh. Like, oh, this, this tells me where we're at right now, brother. Oh. You can't even spell my name right. So that, that, that match is... Uh, Chicago, we all three of them. Yeah, I mean, we, were, we were both over at that point, but in the one in one in That's that's when we were in our wrestling with Terry Funk and I shot the angle after the match, and Terry came in and you, you don't even know this story. I haven't been in an article wrestling, I'm gonna tell you the story. So Funk comes in and goes to shake my hand, we shot the angle, we beat me up, throws me out, right? Throws me in the boat, and gig, right? And he says, Come over and try something like cool. So I'm gonna power drive through the table. <laughs> this is a two sound of hardcore starters. He threw me up on the table. I said, What are you going to pile drive me through the table? So, of course, Terry picks me up. I put my legs straight up. I'm up.